The Song of the Dolphins by Claire Wong Lee, Wong Kunun. One year on Christmas, my husband, my two daughters, and I went to Mexico for a vacation. I was an outside salesperson for a travel agency and got on a fam trip, which cost very little. The last stop was La Paz, Mexico. We checked into a seaside hotel. They had a side trip to Cabo San Lucas the very next day to see the dolphins. We tried to sign up, but the booking was full. I talked with a fifteen-year-old bellhop named Thomas. He said his dad Jose was a driver for a tour bus company, and had the next day off and could take us to Cabo on his time off. The price for the day trip Jose asked was surprisingly cheap, and he would pick us up in front of the hotel at eight a.m. We came down to the hotel lobby at seven fifty and waited outside. Finally, Jose showed up. It was eight thirty. He couldn't speak any English, but grinned all the time. He looked like a dolphin, I thought. Jose wore a colorful Hawaiian T-shirt and long, neatly pressed khaki pants. His shiny black hair was combed back neatly, as if he was meeting a dignitary. We couldn't complain too much because I knew only two words of Spanish. Jose explained a lot in Spanish. And I could only understand that he had a daughter, Maria. We got in the van. There was a little boy, five or six years old, sitting in the last row, who called Jose Papa. Then Jose drove to a gas station and started washing his car. After that, he drove the shiny van around and around. It was already ten o'clock. He stopped in front of a building and left us. Including his boy, in the van. In a little while, Jose came out with a girl, seventeen or eighteen years of age. She introduced herself in accented English, and she was Jose's elder daughter, Maria. She had just finished an English class and would be our translator for the day. We said it was late, and the trip to Cabo San Lucas was more than one hundred miles. Would we have enough time? Maria asked her dad, and he said yes. Jose drove on an uneven dirt mountain road, which Maria said was a shortcut. The van jumped up and down and became unbearable at times, but the view was spectacular, especially when the car drove along the cliff with the sapphire ocean far down below. All the time, Jose was singing. A lot of love songs, and he was very happy while he sang. Around noon, Jose stopped at a restaurant. Maria said we would eat there. There was no customers. We asked if we could eat lunch in Cabo. She said her dad said we must eat there. It was already included in the trip. She said Jose, her brother, and she would be back soon, and they left in the van. I looked out the window and saw the van driving straight down a dirt path toward a red and white house in front of a big banana grove. The newly washed van was almost invisible in a yellow dust. It stopped by the house, and the three of them went inside. The owner brought lunch: dark bread and four big bowls of clear yellow soup, with a layer of white rice at the bottom. The bread was freshly made and warm, and the soup was pure chicken stock. I had never tasted chicken soup that was so delicious. Finally, Jose and his children showed up. Maria said Jose wanted to tell us the chicken soup was the specialty of the house. It was made from the free-range chicken, and we could not have had such a dish anywhere else. I looked at the slope outside, and saw the chickens picking at maybe worms inside the grass. The red cock combs and the feathers 
glistening under the sun. I was glad my two daughters didn't hear what Maria said. They had wanted those chickens for pets. The journey continued. Deep down below, in front of the red and white house, stood a plump woman waving at us. Jose rolled down the window and waved back at her, beaming from ear to ear. She's my dad's ex-girlfriend. Maria was trying to make fun of her dad. Really? I exclaimed. Yes. My dad had two girlfriends, both named Rosa. He could only marry one, so he married my mother, said Maria. The woman you just visited was also named Rosa, I said. Yes, said Maria. My mom knew Dad was driving this way, so she told me and my brother to come with him. No wonder Jose dressed up and sang all the way. He was on his way to meet his old flame. I looked at Jose, Maria, her baby brother. Then I remembered the other brother, Thomas, the bellhop at the hotel. Evidently, a big, happy family. Jose knew we were talking about him, but he kept smiling and singing love songs. The dirt road led straight downhill. The deep blue sea was in front of us. We had arrived at Cabo San Lucas. The ocean was postcard blue. The waves were big. Stunning-looking rocks jetted out of the water. Many boats were waiting to take tourists sightseeing. Jose led us to a small yacht. He and his family sat on one side, my husband, our two daughters, and I sat on the other. The boat skipped fast in and out of the blue sea. Dolphins? I asked Maria. Maria reminded her dad. Jose talked to the skipper. The latter drove the boat to the other side of the cape, where the water was calm. Jose sang again. All of a sudden, on the left side of the boat, a smiling dolphin appeared. Its head bobbed up and down, and it was making a smucking, atonal sound like he was singing. Then another dolphin, yet another, and another appeared. Soon a group of them were surrounding the boat singing, singing with Jose. Jose kept on singing happily. He was singing with them, singing the song of the dolphins. <laughs>